Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go. So, I'm an elevator technician. On they break, I'm the one who fixes him. When parts wear out, I replace him. You get it. The other day, I was on a job replacing a worn out emergency light. Back in the day, it was a habit to use a battery of the emergency light to power the elevator's siren system. Modern emergency lights have different voltages, being LED, so I can't use the old way of connecting everything. So I have to wire everything up from scratch, including new battery and siren. No big deal, but it takes a little longer to complete the task. Note that this is a three-stop elevator, ground floor, first and second, I start was hanging up all my out of order signs and start working on a ground floor. Five minutes in, just disassemble the old piece. The story begins. In comes the entitled woman. Mid 40s, can walk perfectly fine, carrying one barely filled grocery bag. The story includes me, the entitled woman, and her lovely daughter, around 15 years old. Excuse me, is the elevator broken again? She asks, not exactly, ma'am. I'm changing this, showing her the new emergency light. Because the old one wasn't working anymore, this will probably take about an hour to complete. At this point, her daughter walks in. How am I supposed to get my groceries upstairs? Me, getting annoyed, I look at her bag and give her the Are you kidding me look? Mom, seriously, take the stairs, it's just two floors. Her daughter says, clearly annoyed. No, I pay for this elevator. And I need it now. Her daughter sighs and says, I'm going up. And she takes the stairs. How long is this going to take? Like I said, ma'am, about an hour. The woman then sits down on a bench in the hallway waiting for me to finish. Really? Oh, well. I do my thing in the cabin, not hurrying at all. Man, the new e-light to the ceiling and pack my things to go one floor up to start the wiring on the top of the cabin. You done yet? No ma'am, I still have to wire things up on top of the elevator. No, I can see you're done. You're packing your things. Yes, I have to take my bag one floor up so I can start on the wiring. Can't I use it now? No ma'am, you can't. There is exposed wiring up there. If you use it now, you can cause a short and you'll get stuck. It's really not safe. Ah, uh, fine. And she sits back down on a bench. Seriously, pissed off. I take my bag and make my way upstairs. As soon as I stood in front of the first floor door, I heard a door on the ground floor close. And sure enough, Karen, the entitled woman, went into the elevator and tried to take it upstairs. Hell no, I wasn't having that. I take my emergency key and as soon as the elevator starts moving, I open the lock, cutting the safety chain. And the elevator comes to a sudden stop. This scared her, and she screams. I open the door, and in my most fake surprised voice, I yell, Oh no, what have you done? While calmly pressing the emergency stop on top of the floor. Yep, this thing isn't going anywhere soon. I say, This is exactly why I said the elevator is unsafe to use now. I'll do my best to get it working again ASAP. But you made a mess up here, so I don't know how long it's gonna take. There was no mess, but I couldn't resist teaching her a little lesson. The entitled woman swears, yells, and makes a scene. I'll be right back. I have to go to the engine room to see if I can get it working again. I close the door and make my way up. On the second floor, the daughter came out of the apartment because of the yelling of her mother, and I quickly explained what happened. The daughter raising her voice, Oh no, please get her out of there. But then she comes closer and whispers to me, Don't hurry, make her suffer. That's my kind of girl. Music to my ears, I smile, give her a thumbs up, and make my way up to the engine room. I call my supervisor to explain the situation in case she files a complaint. In the engine room, I start playing around with the fuses, putting her in the dark, because yeah, I haven't connected the e-light yet. I play with her for about half an hour before I turn off the emergency stop I activated. The elevator synchronizes to the lowest floor and I wait for the doors to open. Please, don't ever do that again, I tell her. The entitled woman, white as a sheet, shaking, 
No, I, I won't. And she takes the stairs and goes inside. I never heard from her again. I calmly finish my job and leave the building with a smile on my face. Mission accomplished. Edit. Some people are having concerns about safety. I made sure there never was any risk. It was intentional that the elevator was able to move because I needed it to. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to access a car top because of the distance between the floors. I tested all safeties I was going to need before I started the work. I disconnected the old light which was conveniently with a plug. When I tested set car top safeties so there never were exposed live wires. When I plugged the door with my bag, I never left a sight. On every floor, the out-of-order tag was placed over the floor call buttons. And the reason why I initially started working on the ground floor is so people who enter the building can clearly see me working when the elevator was still active. The moment when I started working on a car top and people couldn't see me when entering the building, I did make use of the stop button, which I already tested, to prevent the elevator from reacting to calls. Every action I took was well thought out, potential risks were considered, and actions were taken to eliminate them. If I really needed that elevator to stay where it was, I would make sure it would. And the only people I've seen during that entire time I've been there were the two mentioned in this story. No, there never was any risk of anybody getting hurt. Hi everybody, so this is a bit of background on me. I don't have to ritz, however I do tick, twitch, and fidget a lot due to my mental health disorders. Borderline personality disorder being the main contributor to my tics, and I have gotten used to it. Much, much therapy, much, much meds. But when I'm in a public place, I tend to be more stressed out, since this was when I didn't have my service dog at the time. Reminder that I was and still am a minor. Also, this is one of my first times posting, so please be nice. So this day was just an ordinary day and I was out in my local mall to buy a present for one of my friends. Now, I had already had encounters with entitled people about my piercings, scaring the kids, me being out and slight cosplay with friends because I do that and so on. Now, I thought today wasn't going to have any sort of encounters because COVID in my area was nuts. But boy, was I wrong. I was waiting in line in front of an older woman in a store I was in. Hint, very large bookstore that starts with a bar and ends with a blee. And I had a selection of some of my favorite books and a present for my friend. I was having slight trouble holding the books since the store was a bit crowded and it was around the time I ate so I was a bit hungry and I do get a bit more stressed when hungry. So in that sense, my arm was jolting slightly along with my fingers my head jolting to the side slightly as well. These are very common. I hardly verbally tick, so it's usually physical movements. My main strategy is to curl my toes, which does help somewhat, but I still had to set my books to the side to readjust it in my more secure arm. This woman approached me asking if I needed any help, to which I cleared my throat to decline. She asked me if I had some form of Tourette's in which I shook my head no, which normally would result in an Oh, then what's wrong? In a polite manner. But again, I was so wrong. She full on did this very angry huff before saying, Then why are you faking this? Is it for attention or something? Do you want people to feel bad for you? Which caught me so off guard. The following conversation went something like this. I'm sorry? You heard me. Why are you faking your tics then? Ma'am, that's really not something I prefer to tell an absolute stranger. Well, tell me anyway. You're a part of the problem for faking disabilities. Me staring at this woman. I am not faking. But then she bowled her mask down. Did you just talk back to me? My daughter has to Ritz. I've done my research. I understand your daughter has to Ritz. However, I just want to buy my books and go home as fast as possible. Also, please pull up your mask. Don't tell me what to do. I need proof that you aren't faking this. Me, visibly uncomfortable and backing away from her. Ma'am, please, I just want to buy my books. The cashier who wasn't there before. Next person I can help. I quickly rushed over with my books to check out. Pulling my wallet out with my still shaking hand. The cashier gave me a smile under his mask as he scanned my books. 
The woman was rushing over to yell at me, snatching my wallet right out of my hand before going through it, snatching my ID out of it as well. I was in shock, so I stood there and just stared in utter shock at this woman rummaged through my stuff. Thankfully, I snapped out of it and took it back as a cashier yelled at her. As I had to show a photo ID for my card and saw I was a minor. At this point, I was on the verge of tears and ready to call my mom to come pick me up to take me home instead of me riding the city transit. I kind of planked out for the rest of the encounter, but I do remember getting a free book and the woman being taken away by security. Sorry, this wasn't really that interesting, but I do remember getting home safely. In that same month, we got my bestest friend, also known as my service dog, Baz. I'm a 16-year-old female and this is my story. It all started one day when me and my friends decided to go to a bowling alley to have some fun. I went and asked for my mother's permission and she told me sure but asked me if it's okay to take my little sister with me. She's 12 and doesn't really have a lot of friends. I have no problem with that to be honest. I have a really good relationship with my little sis and I don't mind keeping an eye on her for a couple of hours. She's a polite kid and doesn't stir troubles to start with anyways. On a Sunday night, we met up at the bowling alley and we started our night with some fresh drinks, mostly juices and smoothies. Then we started changing our shoes and stuff. I found my sister a pair of shoes her size to her in my team and we started having some fun. Let's just say that she was not really strong enough to fully push a bowling ball to the end of the aisle but she was trying nonetheless. Her desperate tries to do so were really cute and all of us were pretty much cheering for her. After around 15 minutes or so, it was my little sister's turn to swing the ball one more time. So she went up to the ball stand, waited for a proper ball she could hold in her tiny hands until a pink ball popped up right in front of her. She was really excited that she got a ball with her favorite color that was compatible with her little fingers. We started cheering for her to throw the ball. She got excited, but before she could release it, a wild Karen with an extremely blinding blonde hair appeared right behind her and stopped her from releasing the ball by fully grabbing it with both hands. It got silent for a brief moment because no one really understood what was happening. Then I snapped back to reality and asked her, Hey, what are you doing? She glared at me intensely as if I killed her dog. Then she yelled, That's my baby's ball. How dare you take it from him? What do you mean your baby's ball? Isn't this ball owned by the center or did you bring it along with you? You know, some people bring their bowling balls with them to the center and that's okay. So at first I thought that was the case and would have understood if that's it. Would have been upset because what she did still wasn't alright but I get it. But then she answered, no, we don't really own a ball but as long as we're here, he likes to play with a specific one, the pink one. Um, your kid likes pink balls? Oh, wait, it's not actually yours? What is this nonsense? You could have injured my little sister with that move you pulled. And now you're telling me that you don't actually own a ball? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? Can't you see that I have a champion in the making here? My little child is going to be a world champion one day. And it all starts with this pink ball. It's for luck. And plus... That's his favorite color. You know what? No. You're gonna hand us that ball back and my sister is going to throw it like she was supposed to. And then you could use it till the ball ends up popping up in your stand. Which is another crazy point I should have made since if things went correctly, their ball shouldn't have popped up on our stand to start with. Which makes me wonder if she was lying about it or just confused. Of course, she refuses to hand it over, but I was not really going to take this nonsense and walk away. If she would have asked nicely in the first place, then that would have been a completely different story. But snatching the ball the way she did from my little weak sister wasn't okay with me. You're not gonna endanger my little sister on my watch. I was definitely fully indulged in the mama bear mode right now. I placed my hands on the ball she was grabbing, locked them well, give it a good ball and snatch it from her grip. And she absolutely loses it and charges at me. But my friends stand between me and her, trying to block her from reaching me. Most of them were trying to de-escalate the situation because it seemed like it was getting out of hand at this point. 
When she sees that she can't get through and it appears she looked and noticed a couple of employees rushing towards us, since at this point people were looking and our voices were really causing a commotion, she did the unthinkable. She grabbed the ball from the stand, locked her crazy eyes with mine and screamed, Well, if you think that your little brat of a sister is more important than my boy, allow me to show her my support. Then she throws the ball that was in her hand right at my little sister. The ball strikes one of my friend's legs, but sadly it did end up hitting my sister's chest area. We all stood right there in shock for a second, then as I realized what happened, I lost it especially when I saw my sister falling to the floor. I went to pick her up and see how she is while screaming like a mad person. People around started calling 911 after pretty much everyone saw her attack a little girl intentionally. Security guards rushed to the scene and detained the woman after a couple of my friends went ballistic on her when they saw what she did. One guard came and stood right next to me and tried to see if he could help with my sister who is now holding her chest and finding it extremely hard to breathe. In a few minutes, paramedics took over and after assessing the situation, they suspected a broken rib, took my sis and their ambulance, and I rode with her. And another ambulance took my other friend that got hit in the leg earlier. Needless to say, the cops arrested the woman who didn't really seem regretting what she did, judging from the crazy crap she was screaming, while she was getting detained and arrested. I called our mom on the way to the hospital and she arrived shortly after we got there. Thankfully, there were no ribs broken when the scan results came back, but she had a nasty bruise due to the heavy ball impact in her weak chest. Clearly, the woman was charged with a nasty list of charges, including assault on a minor and attempted murder plus some additional charges she picked from attacking my friend and the security guards when they were trying to detain her. 15 years in prison was what the judge ended up serving her. I am not familiar with what happened to her kid, to be honest, as that was not a part that interested me much in this whole saga. For all I know, he's better off without this monster in his life either way. Sister ended up making a full physical recovery, but sadly, still working on getting outside without being, well, afraid. I really hope this horrific woman rots in her jail cell. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.